Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss about the anatomy of the orbit, okay. So as you can see, these two are the orbital cavities, okay. You can define it as quadrangular truncated bony cavities are the sockets of the skull in which the eye and its appendages are situated, okay. So as you can see, it is quadrangular in shape and it is truncated pyramid. It means this is the pyramid okay which has the apex but the truncated pyramid has the two surfaces okay whereas the regular pyramid has only one surface the truncated pyramid has two surface so this is in the uh, shape of the truncated pyramid next moving on to the dimensions of the orbital cavity so if you go along the medial wall so if you go along the medial wall it is around 42 millimeters if you go along the lateral wall it is around 50 millimeters okay and this is called as the base of the orbit horizontally it is around 40 millimeters and vertically it is around 35 millimeters in height and width okay and this distance that is the distance between two medial wall is called as interorbital width which is around 25 millimeter okay and this distance between the two lateral orbital walls is called as the extra orbital width which is around 100 millimeters okay there is one more important term called as the orbital index. The orbital index is nothing but height of the orbit divided by width of the orbit multiplied by 100. This is important in racial configuration of the population. This orbital index is more than 89 millimeters in Orientals. It is 83 to 89 millimeters in Caucasians and less than 83 millimeters in Africans. And one more important measurement of the orbit is the volume of the total orbit which is around 30 ml in which the most of the volume is occupied by the eyeballs so to revise the dimensions along the medial wall the depth of the orbit is 42 millimeters along the lateral wall it is 50 millimeters interorbital width that is the distance between two medial wall is 25 millimeters between the two lateral walls it is 100 millimeters and the orbital index is nothing but height divided by width multiplied by 100 useful in uh, differentiating various racial configurations and the volume of the orbit is 30 ml and this is the picture which is again showing the orbital margin so this is the orbital margin and the width of this orbital margin is around 40 millimeters and the length is 35 millimeters coming to the walls of the orbit so we have four walls medial lateral roof and the floor so we have four walls that is medial wall, lateral wall, roof and the floor and this whole bony margin is called as orbital margin or the base of the orbit okay and here posteriorly we have what is known as apex of the orbit. Coming to bones which are forming the orbital cavity. So we have seven bones which are forming the orbital cavity. This is the right orbit, this is the lateral margin and this is the medial margin okay. So Let's see the bones which will form the orbit. So this is the zygomatic bone. This is the maxillary bone. White color thing is the lacrimal bone. Ethmoidal bone. Okay. This small thing is the palatine bone. This is the spinoidal bone which includes both lesser wing, greater wing as well as the body of the spinoid. And this brown color is the frontal bone. Okay. So we have seven bones which will form the orbit. To make it easier to remember. So you know we have four sinuses. Remember those four sinuses that is sphenoidal, frontal, ethmoidal and the maxillary. Along with that add three more bones that is the zygomatic bone which is very prominent, the lacrimal bone and the palatine bone. So palatine, lacrimal and the zygomatic bone along with the four sphenoidal sinuses name if you remember those will be the bones which will be forming the orbit. So this is the base of the orbit. I will be explaining it in detail next. And this is the apex of the orbit. So this is the apex of the orbit where all four walls of the orbit will converge. Okay. Situated posteriorly towards the cranial fossa. Next moving on to the specific walls of the orbital cavity. The first is the medial wall. So if you take the cut section like this and see from here. This is what the picture is showing on the medial wall of the orbit. 
the medial wall of the orbit is quadrangular in shape and it is formed by four bones so under the each heading of the orbital wall remember what is the shape of that wall how many bones and which are the bones which are involved in forming that particular wall what is the clinical importance of that okay which x-ray can be used to visualize that wall okay so coming to the medial wall it's quadrangular in shape and it is formed by four bones okay so from the anterior to posterior if you go it is from the frontal process of the maxilla so this is the frontal process of the maxilla then we have the lacrimal bone then the orbital plate of the ethmoidal bone and the sphenoid bone okay so these are the four bones which are forming so from front to back frontal process of the maxilla lacrimal bone ethmoidal bone and the sphenoidal bone okay next we'll move on to the applied aspects of this medial wall of the orbit so the anterior part of the medial wall has the lacrimal groove so this is the lacrimal fossa with the lacrimal groove okay so in the anterior wall of the medial wall we have lacrimal fossa okay which has the anterior lacrimal crest as well as the posterior lacrimal crest okay and this is the thinnest bone among all the four walls and this medial wall separates the orbital cavity from ethmoidal sinus as well as the sphenoidal sinus and hence this orbital cavity is separated from the nasal cavity altogether by the medial wall of the orbit and here lies the clinical importance that is the ethmoiditis that is the inflammation of the ethmoidal sinus uh, can lead to the orbital cellulitis in the pediatric age group okay and the medial wall can be easily eroded by chronic inflammatory lesions as well as the cyst and even the neoplasm from the adjacent structures and this medial wall is easily fractured during injuries and the orbitotomies and the bleeding is more troublesome whenever the medial wall is injured because of the ethmoidal vessels okay and this medial wall can be easily visualized by your pa view of the x-rays so to repeat the applied aspects it has the lacrimal groove or the lacrimal fossa it is the thinnest thinnest among all the uh, walls of the orbit the ethmoiditis can easily spread into the orbital cavity leading to orbital cellulitis and it can be easily eroded by the chronic inflammation or the cyst it is easily fractured and the ethmoidal vessels are reason for the more bleeding whenever there is fracture or the orbitotomy involving the medial wall and it can be easily visualized by pa views of the x-rays next moving on to the inferior wall again the shape of the wall which are the bones which are forming the inferior wall what is the clinical aspect of the applied aspects okay the inferior wall is again triangular in shape as you can see as you can see this is the inferior wall which is triangular in shape and it is formed by three bones okay the three bones which are forming are the orbital surface of the maxillary bone so this is the orbital surface of the maxillary bone which is forming one of the part then we have the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone as well as this small green thing that is the palatine bone the three bones which are forming the floor are the orbital surface of the maxillary bone orbital surface of zygomatic bone and the palatine bone so what is the clinical uh, importance or the applied aspect of this uh, floor of the orbit the posterior part of the floor is separated from the lateral wall by what is known as the inferior orbital fissure okay so this is the floor of the orbit as you can see and this is the lateral wall which is separated by the inferior orbital fissure okay so in this picture it is very well seen so the floor is separated from the lateral wall by the inferior orbital fissure which continues anteriorly as the infra orbital groove okay which extends as a canal and then opens on the orbital margin that is the inferior orbital margin as infra orbital foramen okay so the inferior orbital fissure then the infra orbital groove infra orbital canal and the infra orbital foramen okay so in this foramen there lies the infra orbital artery as well as the vein so this is one of the uh, anatomical features which is important to remember and even this wall is also thin and it is easily involved in the blood fractures though this is thicker than the medial wall since there is no support from below that is it is open to the maxillary sinus hence it is more easily involved in the blood fractures and this can be easily invaded even by the tumors of the maxillary sinus and it is also well visualized in the pa view of the x-ray and this wall is approached by the inferior orbitotomies next the lateral wall 
again what is the shape it is triangular in shape and it is formed by two bones the bones which are forming the lateral wall are zygomatic bone okay so this is this is the zygomatic bone and the sphenoidal bone two bones zygomatic and the sphenoidal bone in the sphenoid it is the greater wing of the sphenoid which which forms the lateral wall of the orbit coming to the applied aspects of the lateral wall so on the posterior aspect of the lateral wall we have a small projection called as spina recti lateralis which gives origin to part of the lateral rectus muscle okay and more anteriorly that is the zygomatic groove is present which will open into zygomatic foramen and which is uh, having the zygomatic nerves as well as the vessels and there is a small projection anteriorly which is called as the vitnal's tubercle okay which has so many attachments for this so the attachment for this vitnal's tubercle are the fascia of the lps lateral rectus check ligament ligament of lockwood and then uh, lateral canthal tendon sorry for the mistake lateral canthal tendon and the lacrimal gland fascia so these are five attachments on the vitnal's tubercle okay and if you notice the lateral wall just protects the posterior half of the eyeball hence the eyeball is more prone for injury whenever there is lateral wall involvement because of this reason only the palpation of the retrobulbar tumors is easier okay and because of easy approach from the lateral side lateral orbital surgeries are more popular compared to other orbitotomies and since there are no major vessels in the lateral orbital wall it can be easily approached in the lateral orbitotomies and the bleeding is very less and in one of the orbitotomies that is called as cronlin's operation this zygomatico sphenoidal suture is very important landmark in creating flaps okay to repeat the applied aspects of the lateral um, orbital wall so on the posterior aspect we have spina recta lateralis which gives rise to part of the lateral rectus muscle then we have zygomatic groove and the zygomatic foramen which will zygomatic vessels as well as the nerves then we have the lateral orbital tubercle of vitnal which has five attachments then this lateral orbital wall gives only protection to the posterior half of the eyeball because of this reason the palpation of retrobulbar tumors is also easy and even the lateral orbitotomy is more popular compared to other orbitotomies and this lateral orbital wall is the strongest wall and hence this lateral orbital wall has to be sawed open in case of lateral orbitotomies and in the cronlin's approach the zygomatico sphenoidal suture is very important in creating flaps coming to the roof of the orbit again the shape of uh, the roof is triangular and it is formed by two bones okay this is the roof of the orbit which is formed by the orbital plate of the frontal bone as well as the greater wing of sphenoid only two bones orbital plate of frontal bone and the greater wing of sphenoid coming to the applied aspects so this is the picture which is showing the fossa for the lacrimal gland okay so this is actually called as fossa for the lacrimal gland the small depression on the anterior lateral aspect of the orbit and similarly we have a small depression on the Uh, anterior nasal aspect of the orbital cavity that is in the roof that is called as the trochlear fossa where we have the attachment of the trochlea and even the roof of the orbit is also thin coming to the attachment of uh, the periorbit and the roof the attachment of the periorbit along the orbital side as well as the attachment of dura on the cranial side both are very loosely attached hence it can be easily stripped in case of your orbitotomy sir the surgeries and even the roof is also not perforated by major vessels of the nerves and can be easily nibbled in case of transfrontal orbitotomies okay so to sum up the applied aspects it has the fossa for the lacrimal gland trochlear fossa and it is also thin and the periorbita and the dura on either side of the roof are loosely attached there are no major vessels hence the surgery is easy from the roof coming to base of the orbit okay so as i told this is the base of the orbit the base of the orbit is nothing but the open end or the orbital margin so coming to the bones which are forming the orbital margin or the base of the orbit superiorly we have the orbital arch of the frontal bone laterally the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the frontal bone medially the maxillary bone and the nasal part of the frontal bone and the floor is formed by the maxillary bone and superiorly we have here the supraorbital notch okay 
and supraorbital foramen the supraorbital foramen which will transmit the supraorbital vessels and the nerves and the orbital periosteum is very firmly attached at the orbital margin so this is about the base of the orbit next is the apex of the orbit so the apex is at the posterior end where all four balls of the orbit will converge so we have two important orifices here at the openings that is the optic canal and the superior orbital fissure okay so coming to the optic canal so this is the optic canal which is shown it connects the orbit to the middle cranial fossa so the optic canal will transmit the optic nerve from the orbital cavity to the middle cranial fossa ophthalmic artery with the meninges and the choroidal plexus of the sympathetic fibers are transmitted from the middle cranial fossa towards the orbital cavity okay the optic canal attains the adult size by 4 to 5 years it is around 6 to 11 millimeters okay and the shape of the optic canal is interesting that is from the orbital side to the cranial side so in the orbital side it is vertically oval that is measuring around 6 into 4.5 millimeters as it comes towards the cranium in the middle it is circular in shape measuring 5 millimeters in diameter okay and when it comes to the cranial side it is horizontally oval with 4.5 to 6 millimeters in diameter the meningioma and the optic nerve gliomas which can arise from the optic nerve can lead to unilateral enlargement of the optic canal which is detected by the x-rays easily so the one more important opening in the apex of the orbit is the superior orbital fissure okay so this is the superior orbital fissure which is coma shaped aperture okay it is bounded by the lesser wing of spinoid and the greater wing of spinoid and it is situated just lateral to the optic foramen as you can see and it is divided into three parts by the tenderness ring okay so this is the tenderness ring from where all your erectile muscles will be originated so this tenderness ring will divide this superior orbital fissure into the superior part middle part and the lower part and it is important to remember the structures which are passing through these various parts of the superior orbital fissure so from the superior aspect we have the superior ophthalmic vein okay and the lacrimal nerve and the frontal nerve as well as fourth cranial nerve that is trochlear nerve so you can remember it as super lft that is superior ophthalmic vein lacrimal nerve l for the lacrimal nerve f for the frontal nerve and the t for the trochlear nerve the middle part of this superior orbital fissure we have just remember noa that is nova that is nasociliary nerve oculomotor nerve two branches and the abducent nerve and the and from the inferior part of this superior orbital fissure it is very easy that is inferior ophthalmic pain okay so for just to remember from the superior aspect we have just remember super lft that is superior ophthalmic vein lacrimal nerve frontal nerve and the trochlear nerve from the middle aspect remember nova that is nasociliary nerve oculomotor nerve and the abducent nerve and from the inferior aspect we have inferior ophthalmic pain okay so that is about superior orbital fissure so this is all about the anatomy of orbit in brief hope this video on anatomy of orbit is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do leave your valuable comments thank you so much